so here we are at AVSI Expansional 2024 with one of the most influential people and important people in the entire Western drone industry, Philip Rouse of Q-Pilot. Thanks again for your time, man. Really appreciate you. If you guys don't know, Q-Pilot manufactures the Cube Autopilot, which is quite ubiquitous, as well as the Here Link, Here 3, Here Pro, other peripherals as well. We're gonna learn more about the latest and greatest that's coming out this year for smaller drones, as well as like larger, more robust applications, right? So yeah, check it out. Cool. So you have this poster here. I, I wanna, you, should we talk about this yeah, first? We can talk about the node. Um, hang on. I'll no worries. Try, try and find one. Okay. Hang on. So the node is a new product. Um, it's quite small. In fact, when he shows it to you, it's going to be uh, ridiculously small. Um, as you can see, all of their, basically all their components now are fully NDA compliant on the autopilot side. So the node, the red, the blue, gold, we already know, the ubiquitous cube orange. But Cool. So this is our uh, cube node. Just looks like a little silver module. Um, basically, on the inside of that, this is find, the, the, find the right one. This is the size of like a fingernail. It's smaller than my fingernail. It's smaller than a micro SD card. So, don't know if the lights break here or what. Okay, let's put a light on this. So, this is the whole thing right here. So, this is actually a cube node mounted on a carrier board. Um, so, to give you a bit of an idea of the what's in there, you've got uh, Ethernet Fi. Dual CAN, uh, H757, dual core. Um, we've got our power systems, and then we've got our IMU sits up in the top corner. This one's got the IMU removed. Um, and uh, this is version three. Version four actually gets a, bar a barometer and a compass as well. Oh my goodness, same form factor too? Yeah, same form factor. Uh, version five is also coming. Version five gets a 128 uh, gigabyte memory as well. So. Um, same form factor. Same form factor. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, so we're actually building our own memory card as well because it turns out that micro SD cards all contain Chinese parts, which is a bit of a problem when you yeah, start yeah. talking blue and everything. Um, so, you know, at the moment to be blue on an autopilot, the first thing you need to do is throw the SD card away. Um, obviously, they exempt that because there aren't any options. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. Um, Okay, so this is yeah. basically for really small applications. No, it's 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 actually designed as a as a node, a, uh, like a AP perif node. Um, oh wow! So okay. if you're building an ESC or um, or hang on. where's the uh, air data computer? Got some of these here too. You can see these other products. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this thing is tiny. Here we go. So uh, we've got a device here called we call it the Adaroo, um, which is a, uh, a six. Sorry, having a mental blank there for a second. A six-port uh, differential air pressure sensor. Um, the use of, there's lots of uses for this sort of thing. Um, whether you're doing center of lift calculations on a wing as you're flying, so you can work out the optimal lift, work wow. out when a stall happens, all that sort of stuff, um, or you can use it as a um, uh, a uh, angle of attack. Your sort of uh, it's like setup. advanced avionics, basically. yeah, basically. Um, so we have based that around a cube node. Um, so it means that all we've got to do is have um, all we've got to do is have. Uh, a couple of sensors and a, and a two-layer board, basically, between that to rapidly okay. make another another device. So uh, it means things can be quite cheap because we're building those nodes in massive volumes. We're aiming at 400,000 of those nodes this year. Um, so I'm happy to ramp that up to a million if there's demand. Yeah, um, yeah. But that automatically means it's easier for us to do that and make devices like this without having to design a completely new device every single time. Okay. Um, it means anything, that interface layer being a simple two-layer board uh, becomes cheap and easy. So we Can, can, can third parties build on the node as well? Absolutely. So the node's available, well, sort of available through our... Uh, our distributed channels at the moment. Um, we have very limited quantities at the moment because we're using them ourselves. Okay. We're using them in our test jigs. We're just 
We've just done a new uh, test jig for our GPSs, and we use 320 cube nodes in that test jig. Um, okay. okay. So, you know, it's very, very useful to have this little device that just sort of does everything. Not an autopilot. Um, you could use it as an autopilot if you were building a, if you're trying to build a little tiny drone. Exactly, Black Hornet like Nano. Black, yeah, Black Hornet is, is, is my target on that one. Okay. Like, um, Black Hornet at the price it is, is crazy for what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there's definitely other people can build similar sort of uh, structures, but at the moment you can't exactly fit a cube in the middle exactly, of the Black Hornet. Exactly, exactly. Um, so this does give you that, um, that sort of capability. So. Okay. And then um, just to ask, like, so like pricing, and the yep. How much is the node? Um, the node uh, in version one, which doesn't have the IMU, doesn't have you know the barrow, all that sort yeah. of stuff, or doesn't have SD card. Uh, the single one-off price is thirty-nine dollars. Um, MOQ one, 40, MOQ, under forty bucks. Yeah, US. under forty bucks. So yeah, um, obvious, and, and obviously it's NDA compliant. Of course, Holy yeah, shit, yeah. Everything we build is NDAA compliant, uh, and should I say NDAA 2023, 2024, whatever up to uh, compliant. Obviously, except for the healing. That's sure. 2020 compliant. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's wild. That's, okay. That's, that's, where we're uh, at, so. that's going to be super disruptive, especially for nano drones. Yeah. You'll build their own peripherals and avionics. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really targeted at the peripheral and avionics, but yes. Yeah. So, available IR lock all your other existing distributors? It, 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 it is, but very limited quantities. Okay. That roll I just showed you is the full uh, stock at the moment. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> what we, okay. What, what's left after what we okay. use for all of our test jigs and everything. Um, but yeah, obviously, us using them for our test jigs first. We did that first, so we can sure. we do the, the debugging and everything yeah, yeah. internally. Get some um, code. There's already a paperif code for Node uh, in Arch Pilot, okay. um, and on our forums available for everyone to look at, so you can have a go and see what you can need. Can it also support PX4 as well? Uh, it will be. Uh, obviously, many people don't realise that you know they think we're just Arch Pilot, Arch Pilot, Arch Pilot. Uh, Julian Oez is part of our team. Um, oh, really? Congratulations! You know, that's, yeah, we, we obviously support the uh, PX4 team as well. Always have. I was PX4, Archer Pilot, Hardware Lead, up until join code. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we've, we've always had a, a good relationship with yeah. the developers. That's beautiful, man. That's great. So, we need we need to have a collaboration. Can we talk about the Red Cube? Because I've been, yeah, sure. this is, I mean, what, several years this, you've been talking about this? Yeah, it's finally to fruition. I think, uh, if people have been following our posters, it, it has been, you know, we've updated this poster recently, but uh, it's always been sort of lurking away on the end in this formula, formless little uh, red dot. Um, and we've talked about it. Uh, I know Lewis Vale calls it the uh, the pink unicorn, um, which ironically, when we did the first batch for the developers, the anodizing didn't work correctly and it did come out pink. So there has been a pink cube. Um, so I'll, yeah, let's go check out that. So basically... For that, you will need to use, uh, should I write it down? Cool. So, um, this is the beta edition that's out at the moment. Um, you can tell you've got a beta edition by the really crappy laser marking and the lack of texture on the plastics. Okay. Um, if you've got one with a white base, you've got an alpha edition. So, um, so they have actually been out for a little while. Okay. A lot of developers have already got them and a lot of development work is already happening on them. Um, uh, a couple of things you'll notice. Uh, your USB is on the top and your SD card is on the top. Makes Brilliant. it a little bit easier to get to. Absolutely. Um, oh my goodness. Ironically, that adds a huge amount of cost in manufacturing, but anyway. Um, <laughs> the other thing is uh, we have emphasized a little bit on country of origin on the top. Um, in Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. So you can't write made in Taiwan on something that is made on the other side of a particular strait because that's actually illegal. Okay. okay. Um, so 100% you know, made in Taiwan. Yeah, 100% made in Taiwan. Um, so the QR code on the top, uh, if anyone takes a still shot of this feed, um, check the QR code. That'll take you to the information about this particular cube uh, through DroneShare and what its calibration is wow. um, and what it's gone through in the test chamber. The interface on that one is ex is experimental at the moment, but yeah. it'll get better and better as we go. So that was, that was sort of rushed just in time for the show so we could demonstrate a little bit. Um, that is an encrypted um, 
code though so okay. you know someone has to have physical access to your cube to be able to get it um, and you know there's a second code on the side if you swap the lid over I don't actually have one of the second lids okay. with me but there is a an optional lid available that actually seals off the top and you'll see that on the side we actually have a static port okay wow um, and so you can actually control your barometer um, pressures a lot better so if you're flying an airframe that has some strange pressure behavior and stuff like that you can choose where you take your static pressure from okay so inside is there anything that really differentiates it as well from like the existing yep. blue and orange cube yeah so orange plus? Um, you know it's the cube red under it um, sorry for the bad dad humor there but uh, yeah redundant cube uh, it has two instances of RG Pilot running on four cores of CPU so um, we've got two H757 processors on board it's got 256 um, uh, megabytes of flash um, on the primary core um, the USB feeds to both cores so it's single single plug-in when you plug into Mission Planner and you get your firmware on this you'll actually see that you're plugged into two autopilots um, you can interact with them separately on two instances of Mission Planner or two uh, so fully redundant autopilot basically yep. in one form factor yep. Yep. rather than needing two cubes in parallel which many yep. folks have been doing you yes do. yeah so uh, already if you do end up going down and having a look at the RF design side of the booth which is down there yeah. um, they've got a flight controller called the AF3 which takes three individual cubes um, it can take three individual cube reds as well so so of, six yeah gets that redundancy going okay. to a uh, crazy level um, obviously everyone knows RG Pilot prohibits the use of autopilots for manned aviation that's great but people still do it um, yeah. so therefore we want to try and get things to the level that is uh, more suitable totally for that safe. Um, we obviously don't want that first instance to be someone who is flying on one of our pieces of equipment. So yeah. we want to try and make things as safe as possible. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. pricing on this and uh, availability? Pricing, pricing on this, as it is there, there's $1,000 there. If you just get the cube by itself, it's $800. Um, it's the retail price okay, of so that. Okay, so more expensive than the existing one. But, you're, but you're getting expensive. two autopilots plus a yep. bunch of other capabilities. Yeah, um, They're all based on the... Um, the ICM uh, 45686 um, dual balanced uh, IMU. Um, most people don't realize that, well, some people do. The MPU 6000, for those who have been in the industry for ages, was an awesome IMU. And the reason it was so good is because it was actually a balanced gyro. Um, there were uh, two, for every axis, you actually had two gyros. So people could think it was a six axis, it was technically a nine axis gyro. Um, they've finally moved back to that form factor in the 45686. And what that does is, you know, talk with my hands through. No, for sure. Um, you get the, the two gyros are back to back. So if you get a bias from temperature or something like that, they tend to go in opposite direction, which means you can measure that and counteract that. So temperature stability and temperature noise yeah, yeah. that has just plummeted um, by for sure. massive orders of magnitude. So the quality of that sensor is, is uh, yeah, miles so ahead. Of as that. we get more high-end industrial enterprise, maybe even manned aviation and defense applications. Even if you're doing stuff like, um, you know, you, you obviously want a good gyro that's uh, predictable when you're flying in acro mode too. So yeah. um, obviously you're not flying a, an FPV racer yeah, yeah. With, a, with a cube red on board. That's a little extreme, but um, yeah, when you're, when you're flying something bigger, um, For sure. you still need that agility. Um, or a $2 yeah. million dollar aircraft. So something that, I'm going to show this to you guys here, and, and I have to give Philip credit. So I posted in the past about Western aircraft, Western firms not being able to innovate, and I've been wrong in my articulation. This aircraft above us is the Krauss Hamdani. I don't know what the name of the aircraft is, but that thing is a real production vehicle that my understanding costs seven figures. It's de depending on fit out, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. KH for, uh, okay. for okay. details on that one. Um, but it's, it's yeah. powered by, by by your stuff. It's It's got a uh, cube inside. Um, obviously, it also has uh, core Raja Pilot developers working on the uh, on the system and in the crew. Shout out to Tom Pittenger. Um, yeah, shout out to Tom and, and Jonathan and and uh, yeah, a Wonderful. few others. Um, so uh, a great crew over there. They really know what they're doing. And um, yeah, that aeroplane is absolutely incredible. It can fly for days on end. And yeah, really? love it. Love it. Um, you can't see from here that there's, um, 
Yeah. Look, yes, Very expensive solar yeah, panels on top of that. Did you see that? Wow. Space grade. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay, so, all right. And I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but basically the Here Link is probably the most widely used GCS and Radio Link, probably among most OEMs. It's easily the most affordable for the price and the most capable for the price. Yep. Here Link 2, I hate to ask you about it, put you on the spot. Is it coming? Here Link 2. We need companies like Qualcomm and other chip manufacturers to get off their ass and stop sending free shit to China and okay. actually support us. Um, because at the moment, people talk about Western tech is not as good as um, Chinese tech. Yeah. Uh, it's the biggest load of bullshit on demand. So if you can beep that or not, if That's you like. Um, it's just fact. The, the technology in Healink is US tech. Um, and yes, it is a Chinese, uh, technically a Chinese chip inside. It is made in Taiwan, American tech, but there is a Chinese company in that little loop, and so therefore, oh, banned. Um, so, no, it's not NDAA 2023 compliant because of the or associated entity. Section 848 thing. or whatever, yeah. Section 848, whatever it is, yeah. Is it 848? 848, Section yeah, 848. There you go. Um, so we've been in talks with other chip manufacturers and the answer we keep getting from them is no, we, we don't give this out. Ironically, our Chinese competitors have the exact sections of uh, modem access that we need in the, in the Qualcomm chips and they give it to them and they say, oh no, but that's the China division. Now, that's still Western tech. For sure, for so sure. So it might be Chinese companies that are capable of using it but that's because these Western companies give it to them. Okay. They don't give it to Western companies. So that, that whole, uh, we need to encourage Western innovation. The Western innovation happens. What we actually need government to do, DIU especially, hello DIU and anyone there, get your butts into gear, get down to Qualcomm, kick them up the ass and say, support these people. Like, and if we're, know, and other fellow drone com Trump companies, they probably, you probably want their support as well. So if you're absolutely. a drone OEM and you want to see yep. here link to... Yeah, ring up the, Qualcomm and say, stop being traitorous little bastards. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if that's going to work, but you know. maybe a little difficult. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe being a bit more subtle than me. I'm not really good at the uh, political correctness. No, so. that's fine. That's fine. I mean, we, we need honest conversations about this because from a bomb perspective, it's currently in a lot of uh, Western firms we're not as profitable as we could be. Yep. Most of us aren't profitable at all. Yep. And some of that comes down to, I mean, you're, you're, the alternative is paying, what, 10 times more for a GCS and radio? And yep. we, I, we haven't talked about cameras yet, but, uh, I mean, yep. yeah, really appreciate your time, man. Cause, no worries. Um, yeah, let us know how the industry can help, too, because I think a lot of, um, with respect, your customers, they're your customers, I don't think they realize that they also have an impact yep. and can basically help you as well. Yeah. And in turn, help the entire industry. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, man. Thanks again for your time, dude. No I appreciate worries. you, Thank bro. You very much. Cool. Yeah. Cheers, man. Take okay, care. See you later.